Yo, what's up? It's Yarumi. So this is part two of the uh, video connect tutorial or walkthrough series where I walk you through the guide to no code marketplaces. So uh, this is assuming that you've downloaded the guide at guides.everythingmarketplaces.com, um, which is, of course, a uh, guide that I created uh, for everything you need to know about building, launching and scaling in the online marketplace uh, using no code. So uh, we'll just jump right into it uh, because this is going to be uh, the fun, the fun part where we uh, jump into talking about why no code? So as someone that's looking to build an online marketplace, um, why should you consider no code and what are some of the benefits uh, and how can you leverage it? So we'll just jump right into it. So uh, so why no code? So generally speaking, marketplace uh, businesses, they don't uh, leverage any proprietary technology. Um, you know, they're fairly straightforward. So, um, you know, in Airbnb, as you probably know, uh, quite a few years ago, like the Airbnb for X era, Pretty much a lot of the uh, marketplaces kind of had a similar look and feel, similar kind of functionality. Um, even like Studio Time took a lot of inspiration from Airbnb during that kind of era. So, um, you know, a lot of marketplaces don't reinvent the wheel. They simply create a specific product experience um, for the uh, value that they're going to add uh, in their specific kind of vertical um, or, you know, if it's not a purely vertical and a horizontal kind of marketplace. So uh, having said that, uh, no code um, is definitely, uh, there's a lot of specific platforms out there. So for instance, ShareTribe, uh, there's going to be Bubble and then Webflow, which we uh, are going to cover in this guide. Um, but they've built a lot of this, um, a lot of the core kind of functionality uh, that marketplaces typically require. And so that way you can kind of leverage it. So we'll just jump right into it because I, I go down here and just kind of, uh, I list out the main benefits. So we're going to cover these, um, you know, one by one. So the first is going to be no code is much cheaper and faster than building your marketplace platform from scratch. So if you're looking to build an online marketplace from scratch, um, whether you're a developer yourself, um, you're going to hire a dev team, uh, whether that's like building a team internally and hire developers or an agency, it's very costly. Um, you know, it's typical, you know, quite a few years ago, it could be easily upwards of six figures and take months to simply get started building. And um, that's just to get a initial kind of product live. So that's, uh, of course, changed with uh, no code. So then, uh, as I kind of mentioned, the next one is going to be most marketplaces have the same basic functionality and requirements. Um, so even when we uh, covered in part one of the videos, um, as you've, uh, you'll probably notice that and are aware of now is that most marketplaces, um, they just have the same kind of core functionality. Uh, might be a little bit different uh, kind of custom uh, UI for uh, for the user interface, um, but the core functionality um, is definitely it's very similar from marketplace to marketplace. So um, there are no code tools, as I mentioned, also that have productized and even sort of modularized. So you can think of like like created kind of components for basic marketplace functionality. So uh, we're going to jump into it in more detail. But uh, say for instance, Share Tribe. Uh, is a great uh, uh, platform to build a peer-to-peer -peer marketplace. And they specifically built a platform that uh, has created a lot of this core functionality. So that way you don't have to rebuild it. You can simply leverage uh, what they've built and customize it for your specific marketplace. So uh, from there, using additional tools, um, or sorry, customizations, tools, and integrations. So it allows you to create additional features uh, on top of your existing kind of uh, the existing marketplace. Um, that allows you to create these more custom user experiences. So uh, what I mean by that is that, you know, if you were to build a custom marketplace, um, every kind of change or iteration that you make is going to have to be custom. Now, there's a lot of uh, not only platforms, but there's other kind of specific tools that you can uh, use to integrate within your uh, no-code marketplace. So for instance, ShareTribe, um, you know, if you built a basic peer-to-peer -peer marketplace and you're looking for some kind of uh, specific kind of functionality, uh, you know, whether that be for like ID verifications, you can simply uh, leverage a third party, uh, third party tool, integrate that within ShareTribe. Um, and that way you uh, can quickly um, add that functionality uh, using little to no code in some instances. So um, also no code tools allow you to uh, operate, iterate and support your marketplace using minimal time and resources. So you have less dependency on a development team and you're able to make uh, changes much quicker and much cheaper. So even in, in the use case of ShareTribe Go, if you're not technical, you can actually make changes on the fly kind of via their admin panel. Um, so it's definitely a huge advantage over 
uh, being locked into a custom marketplace platform where you're dependent upon uh, developers. So also the last kind of point of that um, is before no code, building and running an online marketplace was uh, typically very capital intensive, um, but it has uh, now been made uh, a lot more uh, easier to start using these no code tools and platforms. Uh, as I mentioned, you could easily spend six figures or even seven figures, you know, basically raising capital to just simply t uh, build a product that then you had to take to market um, and then in turn kind of, uh, you know, validate that initial product through being able to generate supply, demand, some liquidity. Um, but fast forward to today and you can leverage these tools and platforms um, to then uh, focus more on, uh, you know, marketing your product and generating supply, demand and liquidity versus the initial kind of build. All right, so now that we mentioned some kind of benefits, there are of course some drawbacks to no code and even low code. So we're gonna cover those uh, really quickly. So, um, you know, while it is uh, typically cheaper and a lot faster to build your marketplace, it does have quite a few limitations, like pretty much anything, um, you know, has kind of trade-offs. So uh, one of the first kind of, um, one of the drawbacks is gonna be the still learning curve. So even though that ShareTribe Go is uh, probably one of the most user-friendly uh, platforms for building an online marketplace using no code, there is still a learning curve to understand, you know, first off, what's possible using ShareTribe Go, which hopefully this uh, guide in the video kind of compliment series will help you understand. But uh, not only that, but once you sign up, just understanding kind of like the interface of ShareTribe. So how do you kind of set up your marketplace? Um, you know, what are some of the customizations? How do you kind of iterate that? So, you know, there's a, there is like a little bit of a learning curve to kind of get up to speed. And then also just, you know, identifying some of the other tools that are out there and, and you know, in the market, how those can then kind of, um, you know, potentially uh, integrate with your, you know, main marketplace platform and so forth. So th there is a learning curve, um, you know, with the no code tools and platforms. So from there, uh, the next one's gonna be, so uh, as with most, most tools and platforms, um, you know, there are gonna be some constraints uh, in the early days. So there are gonna be uh, most likely some functionality that your marketplace might require. Um, now, whether that's an immediate priority or a later stage priority, um, you know, that's kind of uh, dependent upon, you know, you and your specific marketplace, but there are gonna be some, uh, some functionality that is not possible. Um, so for instance, like a very sophisticated, you know, transaction kind of modification, um, once a booking is accepted, you know, you're not going to be able to do that through share tribe go, um, maybe even some kind of like admin kind of constraints. Um, but typically those, uh, you know, are not uh, critical to validating the initial kind of marketplace, um, you know, generating initial supply, demand and liquidity, and they're going to be a little bit later stage. They're not a huge um, factor in the earliest stages. Um, so Speaking on that, the next point is, you know, if these initial limitations are not, um, you know, if they're not deal breakers in the early stages, they could be later. So even if you do build a no code you know, marketplace or kind of low code, um, you know, these might not be, you know, critical to the earliest stages, but at some point, if you're built on, you know, no code, you could be kind of locked into that um, if you don't have uh, the ability to integrate with something or customize it for, you know, very custom specific marketplace needs uh, later down the road. Um, whereas if you're fully custom, then of course you could simply kind of, you know, build that later. Um, also there are still costs. I do want to mention this. So of course, you know, no code does allow you to take your idea, um, to live product, you know, uh, typically much uh, cheaper and faster, but there's still cost to these tools and platforms. Um, and especially as you scale. So, you know, there are going to be costs and you are going to have multiple kind of subscriptions if you use multiple tools and platforms. Um, because most of these tools and platforms are, you know, uh, SaaS products themselves. So those are some of the initial kind of, uh, you know, some of the pros and cons of no code. And um, now we're going to jump into uh, assuming that no code is kind of suitable for your marketplace. We're going to talk about the most common no code marketplace platforms. So the first, which uh, if you're not new to the channel, um, then you definitely know that uh, I'm uh, a huge fan of ShareTribe. Um, but we're going to cover it right now. So ShareTribe is a marketplace platform um, that allows you to take your idea to live marketplace without code. That's kind of like straight from their site. Um, and they also emphasize that they, uh, they're they used by a thousand plus marketplaces um, that are alive right now and operational. Uh, so there, it's not just, you know, like an early stage kind of uh, SaaS, um, you know, tool or platform that allows you to take your idea to live marketplace. Um, there are actual marketplaces that are operational and generating revenue that are built on ShareTribe. So, um, you know, we'll kind of jump into a little bit later 
uh, but I'll cover quite a few examples of Share Tribe uh, marketplaces. And uh, once again, Studio Time is uh, currently um, operational right now on a Share Tribe Flex, a heavily customized Share Tribe Flex marketplace. So that's just an example of a highly profitable online marketplace that's built using Share Tribe. Now the second is going to be Bubble. Um, so Bubble is not uh, specific for marketplaces, um, but it is a no-code platform that allows you to uh, create, um, you know, uh, build interactive uh, multi-user apps for desktop uh, mobile web browsers without engineers. So that's kind of like their tagline. Um, they do emphasize that they have a lot of uh, design freedom and drag and drop kind of edit editing capabilities, um, scalable in infrastructure and collaboration. Um, you know, that's what they kind of say on their website. Um, so Bubble, uh, I'll just kind of give you the quick kind of rundown on that, um, but, and I'll mention examples later. Uh, that is gonna be, um, you know, not as specific where ShareTribe is just a kind of marketplace platform, um, but Bubble has quite a few uh, different templates and there's quite a few marketplaces that are built using Bubble, um, but it is kind of quite a complex, uh, you know, no code uh, platform in itself. Now the next is gonna be Webflow. So Webflow is probably one of the most uh, visual, um, I think, uh, I would say visual first kind of platforms. Um, so here's kind of like their, their uh, quick kind of like, um, I would say like description from their website. So it, allows, it provides you with the power to design, build and launch responsive websites visually while writing clean semantic code for you. So that's obviously straight from them. Uh, emphasize the ability to, uh, to quickly build well-designed websites, launch and scale um, and once again, I kind of mentioned that directly from their website. So this is just like a simple kind of descriptions of each as I kind of list them out. Um, and, uh, but basically we'll jump into a little bit more, uh, details down here, uh, for each of these specific tools and platforms. But these are the main three, which is once again, going to be ShareTribe, Bubble, and Webflow. Now let's jump into the considerations and some of the decision-making factors, um, for building a no-code marketplace. So this is where it gets kind of fun too. So I basically thought about this, like, uh, you know, what are some of the key considerations that as someone that's looking to build and launch an online marketplace, um, you know, what are, what should you keep in mind? Um, and what are the most typical kind of across the board? So of course this does not apply to every single idea and there are going to be outliers, but I wanted to basically create this, the kind of most common in this framework that allows you to uh, easily identify some of the considerations and uh, kind of how your idea might fit within this. So you can see right here, and I'll just kind of run through it, but basically I mentioned the different options. Um, so ShareTribe has two different uh, platforms, their Go and their Flux. Also I have Bubble right here and Webflow. So the monthly pricing, um, I kind of broke this down. Um, as a note, this is um, you know right at the end of July, 2020. So this pricing can change. Uh, this is what, you know, at the time I created the guide and just edited it. This is what the pricing was. Um, so you'll see right here, I kind of mentioned above, um, and we're going to jump into things a little bit more detail within this kind of framework. But um, ShareTribe Go and ShareTribe Flex are, of course, marketplace specific, Bubble and Webflow are not. Now, ShareTribe Go versus ShareTribe Flex, you can see right here, uh, you know, one of the primary differences is that Go is fully hosted by ShareTribe. So that means it's not really... Um, customizable with third-party integrations yeah, via any like API integration where ShareTribe Flex is, um, same with Bubble and same with Webflow. So now uh, if you uh, saw part one of these videos, you know that we covered the marketplace business types and then some of the functionality. So now, now kind of fast, fast forward to here within this kind of framework is, you know, if your marketplace fits within a peer-to-peer -peer marketplace, then ShareTribe Go and Flex are going to be, you know, great options for you. Um, and we can talk a little bit that, you know, in more detail. Whereas Bubble and Webflow, um, of course, it's possible, but they're not, you know, specifically designed with that in mind. Uh, so now we're going to jump into uh, B2C marketplaces. Um, you know, ShareTribe Go and Flex uh, are suitable for that. Bubble is a little bit more suitable for that, whereas uh, Webflow is not going to be uh, your best option. Of course, it's possible, not the best option. Now we get into more of like the B2B marketplaces, the managed marketplaces. Um, that kind of pushes ShareTribe Go and Flex out. Uh, you know, of course, it is possible. Uh, this is also based off of what I, you know, my own kind of, um, you know, not only experience, uh, but research and then speaking with other marketplaces um, and seeing like the pros and cons um, and, you know, just using operational examples uh, to kind of support this framework. So, uh, you know, managed marketplaces and uh, are going to be a little bit more conducive to Bubble and Webflow right there. So marketplace types. 
we're going to jump into that too. Um, so all these different, you know, marketplace businesses are going to have specific types. So for instance, like the Airbnb or hip camp, if you want to build like this, you know, an Airbnb for X, um, share tribe go and flex are going to be great options. Same with bubble web flow, a little bit less, um, services, marketplaces, you can see right here, like your fibers or Upwork. So those are going to be, um, you know, services for uh, potentially like online. Uh, Share Tribe is a great option for that. Um, you can see like skills and labor marketplaces. And of course, um, you can, I'm going to do like a deep dive into this on, and you know, each type and platform in the later kind of part of these videos. This is just like a run through with a quick kind of framework. Um, but we're going to see Share Tribe go right here and then bubble on um, products and goods. Um, we're going to see that uh, Share Tribe is uh, suitable for that as far as go and flex. Um, I'll jump into more details about some of the key kind of uh, considerations between ShareTribe Go and Flux, whereas Go is going to be more conducive to products and goods um, versus Flux. Uh, but once again, we'll kind of jump into that in the next part of this video. Some of the marketplace functionality um, you can see right here, I kind of, uh, I kind of mapped out. Um, so ShareTribe Go and ShareTribe Flux definitely check off like quite a few boxes here. Um, they've, you know, ShareTribe was definitely built with a lot of this functionality in mind on their product roadmap. Um, Bubble, it, you'll notice that a lot of the uh, checks right here, it checks off a lot of the boxes, but um, I do want to mention down here, so this uh, denotes it's possible um, with custom development and potentially requiring some sort of tool integration for Bubble, um, or it could be, uh, you know, there, it's embedded functionality within the Bubble platform, so it doesn't, it doesn't require a third-party integration. So, for instance, user accounts and management, listing management, location, keyword search. So that's all customizable through the uh, Bubble data. Um, that's going to be through the data tabs, and they don't require, like, any plugins um, or third-party tool integrations. Um, so, of course, you know, Bubble kind of checks off a lot of the marks right here, uh, whereas, like, that's going to be similar with Webflow. Now, I do want to mention that uh just a little bit more to expand on this whereas i kind of think about this like you know share tribe go these checks right here um this you know go is going to be kind of like out of the box whereas bubble is it is a no code tool or platform same with webflow it could potentially require some sort of cus customization that does require coding so that's what these kind of check marks with the asterisks are for um, one of the other factors to keep in mind is, uh, is going to be data migration. So say for instance, you have to switch to a custom platform or you want to migrate your data completely to another platform. Uh, ShareTribe actually, uh, has, uh, considered that when they built their platform. So you can actually export a lot of your data, um, whether that's user data, a marketplace kind of transaction data, uh, you can simply export it a lot through CSV files, um, from their platform. Uh, something else um, that's great about no code, though, is a lot of these tools and platforms do emphasize their developer support, um, which I guess you could call a no code, someone that builds with no code, a developer um, in some sense. But uh, they do have uh, great support for their tools and platforms, actually all of these, so ShareTribe, um, Bubble, and Webflow. And they definitely uh, have great communities and very active communities where you can chat with other, um, you know, whether that's like other no code makers or developers that have, you know, uh, customize those tools and platforms through, say, for instance, like Slack communities. So um, hopefully this is helpful, just kind of breaking down, uh, you know, some of the different uh, considerations and decision making factors when you're looking to build a no code marketplace um, and you're, uh, you know, using the primary uh, options of ShareTribe, whether that be Go or Flux, Bubble and Webflow. So this is just kind of like a like a different kind of framework that I've created uh, via this kind of like chart or table. And that uh, should easily help you identify those. So you'll see right here, I'm kind of scrolling down. Uh, in the next part of the videos, we're going to jump in and we're going to do a deep dive on each of the different tools and platforms. So I'm going to do a, uh, uh, the next part is going to be in ShareTribe. And then we'll do another part on Bubble. Uh, and then we'll do another part on Webflow. So for each of those, we're going to just do a deep dive. We're going to go through the pros and cons. We're going to talk about some uh, different considerations. Um, even talk about some kind of customizations and then show some examples of each of those. So uh, hopefully you found this video helpful and uh, I'll see you in the next part.